All right, so this video we're going to be working on the uh, power steering on a uh, TCM forklift. So trying to get this uh, hydraulic cylinder out of here is just about impossible. Let's see if we can uh, show you what I'm trying to achieve or not. Basically, there's this uh, castellated nut here. I had to use a, uh, a 30 millimeter with a bunch of extensions and an impact gun. And uh, I don't know if we'll be able to see it down there or not. I can see it. Can you see it? It's just down there in the middle. So basically I had to turn the wheel so like the passenger side wheel is kind of flat facing forward in order to get access to that. And now to get access to the rear of it, right in there, I think. No, it's somewhere else. It's in here somewhere. I'm gonna have to turn the wheel straight and then take the tire off by the looks of it. So I'll have to take the air out of the tire to do that because these are split rims and I don't want any trouble with them. So that's what the factory recommends to do for taking those off. I had to use this big pry bar to beat on that on the uh, split pin here to get it kind of loose. And I had to use a uh, 90 degree pliers to manipulate it. And I tell you, it was not easy. I feel bad for forklift mechanics because this is <laughs> miserable working on this thing. It's quite the experience. So certainly improved my skills by working on it. So uh, I'll probably be unable to show you a lot of removing the cylinder. It looks like there's probably two hoses on it somewhere that I need to separate. I've got a, a great big drip tray underneath. I got a three-ton jack and some blocks of wood, so I got it lifted up on the counterweight here. So, uh, yeah, like I said, I'll get the, this tire off here, and then uh, we'll carry on trying to get this uh, cylinder out of the machine. All right, so we freed up the rear joint on that hydraulic cylinder. So you need a shallow 24 millimeter half-inch drive ratchet uh, and a three-foot pipe to get that out of there. The front joint is not tapered but this one appears to be where it joins that center part so I just have a, a four pound hammer we're going to try to hit this and free this up so as you can see I put the nut back on and I've already hit the nut once so it was worth it all right not really uh, something you can do with one hand or one arm so I'm going to turn off the camera and I'm going to get this separated. All right, so we got the patient separated from the forklift here now. I was wrong, this uh, is tapered and it was actually quite hard to separate. So what I did was I used like a, a four foot solid bar of like inch and a half stainless rod. And there's just enough space to drop it up and down in there half a dozen times and uh, eventually you pop this off. So all you do is you get the nut on so it's flush with the top of the uh, stud here. You just pound on it a few times with a solid rod or a hydraulic cylinder rod or whatever. You get that out of there. It was a 17 millimeter crow foot to get the two hydraulic lines off of here. And I should have bought two of these drip pans. One for under the machine and one for the table. Would have saved me a little bit of cleaning if I did that. So I guess at this point I'm just going to spend a bit of time cleaning this filthy thing off and then uh, eventually we'll start taking it apart. Alright, so we got the uh, cylinder cleaned off. In the manual this is called the power cylinder. So I went through the uh, parts and they appear to be generally the right size. So this optionally can have a boot over the shaft but it's in good condition. So I'm not worried about adding a boot to it, but the uh, diameters of everything kind of make sense, which tells me it's a, a go to take this thing apart. I've already loosened up the end cap. I tried to uh, use some large uh, plumber's pliers here. Didn't help too much. 
by just tapping on the, the uh, square with a, a drift seems to be working. It's not pretty. Unfortunately, this is the way it goes done. At some point, we'll be able to use the pliers. Yeah, we're good now. Seems to be a pretty fine thread. Just gotta check to see if there's any set screw. It's almost like it's binding. No set screw. I did find that this uh, rod end is loose, so I'll have to replace it. They're about $20. They're not any more expensive than what you'd pay for a car. It's strange, it's getting harder to remove as we go. So just rinse it out a little bit. Okay, this will be under the machine so it'll be invisible. So it's a good one to start with because these other cylinders are all visible. Considering how much grease was on this thing. I guess we'll film this real time. stop the video I'm gonna get this thing out then we will get back to it all right as luck would have it there's only a couple more turns now we're ready to separate this thing so you can see that there's like a, a white Teflon there this is staked on and in order to remove this I guess we've got two options we can separate from the adjuster or take off that staked bolt or nut rather. So I'm thinking we are going to uh, separate it in the middle and leave that alone. So I'll have to get some tools organized to do that. And then I got my uh, hook picks out. I would say that this blue job goes on here and that o-ring probably goes on here it seems like I got more o-rings than necessary so that was a bit uh, confusing to me but uh, I guess I'll get this apart and we'll get back to it again alright another questionable use of tools I used an inch and sixteenth on this extending shaft and just an adjustable wrench I have large metric wrenches but they're not available right now and all I did was kind of put it like this and pound on it with a two pound hammer. And now I can unthread this. So that's part of the task is to get that out. 
luckily that's not completely full of rust. But it's a fine thread though, it's pretty tight. And now I'll have to get a, a flat on this and then wind this nut off. So that's uh, the next step here for me. Alright, success. I was able to get that off. It was just a 17 millimeter for the shaft. So there's a clear demarcation where this nut needs to be bottomed out. It has a bit of thread locker on it. So keep that in mind. Then this shaft reduces sizes. So it should come off. Yeah, it comes off quite nicely. So that's helpful for reassembly as well. Now looking in here, it looks like there's a, uh, a long bushing in there. And two seals. And that is about it. I'm not sure why I have so much material here. It could be that there's a washer miss missing or o-ring missing for the end cap here, which would make sense. It's quite possible somebody's had this apart and didn't put that o-ring back on. And yes, there's a split, so that's definitely a bushing that's in here. So I need to remove this uh, clip, which we replaced within the package, from here. I don't know if this is strong enough to do that or not. Yeah, I might get it. So we got that. Now I gotta somehow push out this seal. And then I'm not sure how to access the next seal in there. If I need to drive that bushing out, I'm not gonna be likely want to do that. So I'm going to spend some time off camera and figure out how to uh, disassemble the rest of this. Alright, so after a closer observation, the second seal is uh, fully pliable. So I just need to pick it out. So the only thing I really need to do that might be somewhat tricky is to get this uh, initial seal out. So I'm just going to use a screwdriver and try to pop it out. It's been in there for a while. I don't want to create any burrs. So that's uh, what you're going to want to think about when doing this job, is how to get that out of there without marring up any of the uh, surfaces. So I can see this being a, a bit of fooling around. So I just wanted to provide a little detail on that. Now I'm going to get that out. And then the other one, the important part is identifying the orientation on it. So, see if we can get it out of there without losing orientation. Okay, so I got that out. And it has like the petticoats facing down. So I'm just going to put that on the table because I know which way I took it out. And that's the way I'm going to put it in. So I'm going to clean that out with brake cleaner. There's a, a bit of rust in here. And I'm going to get that thing out of there. And then we'll see how to put the new one in. I think we're going to use the old one to drive in the new one if, uh, if it survives. All right, getting that seal out of there was quite difficult. But I think uh, there might be, there has to be like a washer to back up this ring. And I think what's happened is that the washer has sunk into the uh, seal. And I got, so I gotta get that separated so that I can reuse it on the uh, new seal. But Basically I took a big screwdriver and I drove it in with uh, my two pound hammer until I could get this seal out because that was like the real only way of accessing it. So uh, like I said, there's got to be a metal, removable metal ring that's supposed to back up against this and then the clip goes in around it. Otherwise like the pressure would just pop this out of there. 
So I'm going to take a look at uh, how to get that apart and then start putting things together. All right, after a careful inspection, it appears this seal is just manufactured differently than this seal. So with this seal here, it has a, uh, a shoulder that the clip can go against and a, uh, in my case, a 24 millimeter 3 8 drive socket kind of works other than it's pushing against the uh, rubber. So we'll see how to get that in. Now I gotta put in this part first. I have some uh, Parker O-ring lube. I don't know if they make this anymore. I found this in like a flea market kind of situation. It's amazing what you find. So some people will heat these in hot water before they put them in. But this is not a very big one, so hopefully it just fits. Seems like it's going to be a, a tricky situation to <laughs> get this thing to go in here. Try to stop it with one finger. You gotta got to fold it in on itself to get it in there. And hopefully it doesn't flip over on me and never go in. Pretty close, it's just kind of bound up in there. Almost like it's flipping over. There, just needed a little bit of encouragement. Just about there. So I'd already slid this over the shaft without the seals just to make sure I hadn't created any uh, impossible burrs anywhere and it's all good that's nice and tight those uh, threads aren't good for that seal though now i have to drive this thing in here looks like it's going in without damaging anything Just about there. Good job to be wearing your safety glasses. So I gotta take a minute and make sure that this is clipped in all the way. And then looking at these, I've got the right seal here. I'm gonna put a bit of lube on it and put that on. And uh, I probably have an extra seal for something. I gotta figure that out. Should be one seal that probably goes on here that was missing, and then I'll have one extra one. So I'll get a little bit further and we'll take a look at that. All right, so I got the uh, this part on. So there was one O-ring for it and a larger O-ring for on here. And uh, this last piece here, I'm gonna assume that the O-ring that came with it is unnecessary if you buy the other kit. So I'll just ignore it. If you pinch this enough, you can get a uh, pick under it. Again, this is something that you could use uh, hot water for, especially depending on the uh, temperature of the day. Well, you know what? There is an O-ring underneath of it. Ah, mystery solved. All right, so you don't need to take that nut out. This is a, uh, a solid piece. It was kind of in the back of my mind that maybe this was sandwiched together, but that's not the case. So I'll just give that a quick spray. Should be clean to begin with. 
Now I need to identify my good fresh O-ring, which I got. So put some more of this uh, goop on it. It's pretty stringy stuff. It's, you say, it's interesting. You could probably just use Sil Glide or something on here instead. So that's in there. That kind of gives uh, the pressure for this part. Now let's see. Clearly, we can't be. Uh, Abusing this too much. Oh, we're in. So I inspected that thing quite a bit off camera, trying to figure out if it had a, a direction on this uh, Teflon or whatever it is, and it doesn't. So it's definitely sitting prouder than before, so I think that is good. I uh, cleaned this off with some sandpaper. That o ring groove was really dirty because the o ring was missing. So now I need to do a bit of work on the cylinder and start putting things back together. So I'm just going to spend a bit of time sanding that out and then we'll uh, finish assembling this. Alright, so I feel like I'm ready to put things back together. So at this point we're going to put this part over the shaft here. That went well. I had a bit of the Parker material on here and here. So now we will carefully drop that in. I've looked inside the cylinder and it's in perfect condition. There's no moisture damage or anything. Just have to give this a good push though. <clears throat> That's nice and tight. I guess we'll put it down on the table. Put something over the threads so we don't damage them. And uh, I don't know if you can see this or not, but I just... I just put a, a towel over the threads and pushed it in with a uh, tube pad hammer to get it started. To get that Teflon part in there. And now we will start fetting this in and that's going to take a little bit. So I think that that's like the main part of this job. I'm going to break this loose now because I need to change this rod end. I just don't have one yet. Just make it easier to change that on the machine. So uh, I think that I'll get this put together and we'll start putting it back in the machine. Alright, so I got things loosely put together. So it's a regular thread on this side of the uh, shaft. This tie rod end has a reverse, like a left hand thread on it. So I ended up using like a three foot bar trying to like get this thing off. I was looking at the threads, I'm like, this doesn't make sense. It looks like I'm turning it the wrong way. But it, conceptually it's the right way. Then I looked at it more carefully and I realized that I had to go the opposite direction to get this jam nut loosened up. So that would be one I said I had to use a three foot bar over my wrench to crack that loose but that's probably partly because I was tightening it and then it was a uh, inch and a sixteenth here I'm not sure what that would be in metric like one inch is 27 millimeters so we're we're over the 27 millimeter size range for wrenches you got to go up to the next set and this was just shy of inch and an eighth so uh, keep that in mind when you're picking your wrench sets to work on a like a Japanese forklift that's fully metric, that you'll need to go past the regular combination wrench size into the next range just so you have everything covered. I took a file and scratched the head of this stud where the uh, cotter pin goes because you can't see that when you're tightening it. And I'm just going to be beating on it with an impact gun so I kind of need to know where to stop the castellated nut so that I can slip that through and put it in. It's not a very heavy nut. It doesn't need to be super tight from what I can tell because there's a taper on that stud. And then I still have to 
drill out the uh, cotter pin from this one because I don't have a replacement right now. Hopefully you can see that in camera. Yeah. So I got a driller, tap that old cotter pin out and get that ready. And then I think what we'll do is we'll put the this hose on first, get the far end in onto the frame of the machine, then stretch this out so that it's engaging the uh, rear axle. And then the last thing we'll do is put that hose on here so that everything is in position. So that's my game plan anyway. All right, so I got that thing back in. It's full of air right now. But uh, we'll give it a turn and see what happens. Alright, so the last thing you're going to want to do is just take a look at your hoses and make sure like the hose at the back should be kind of parallel with the ground so that it's not going to bump up against any cross members as the uh, power cylinder moves back and forth. And then for the one in the front, which is pretty much impossible to see, what I did was I kind of clocked it towards the engine a little bit so that it wasn't right over top of the uh, castle nut. As you can see like right there, that's where the uh, my socket extension is. I'm still working on getting that stupid cotter pin lined up, but uh, the job is essentially done at this point. So that tire has been deflated since I took it off, so I'm going to have to torque this uh, the lugs to 100 pounds and then put the tire up to 100 psi after that, and then I can put the machine on the ground. It seems like the governor is not quite working correctly on this machine. I can't really show the tubing on it right now, but maybe we can. I think something is wrong with the way the tubing is hooked up on here. So right now the governor tube, you would think that it would go to this dash pot here and adjust the uh, throttle. But right now that dash pot comes up to the uh, intake, I guess so that it can sense how much the throttle is open. And then there's a hose coming off of the uh, governor down below the carburetor and it's going onto a T which goes to the uh, distributor and the intake manifold. And there's like no mechanical linkage of any sort between the governor and the carburetor. So I'm thinking that that hose is probably the way it's supposed to work. I don't know. I can't find any vacuum diagrams. So if anybody knows about that, please let me know. Thank you very much and thank you for watching.